Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are. This is uh, episode number 34. And, um, yep, Yankee Tea News. And it's the um, Greenwich Stanford Tea Party Patriots. And the Yankee Tea News is uh, sponsoring this broadcast. So, um, what a week it was. Now, part of the first thing I want to do is a follow up to what we reported last week was gee. What was a U.S. Senator doing at the 102nd anniversary of the Communist Party founding in America? Well, he certainly was full of denials, wasn't he? Uh, Dickie Blumenthal said, I didn't know I was at a communist get-together. Didn't matter that he was the featured speaker. That didn't work. Oh, anyway, you know, I was listening to Jesse Kelly tonight you know, this, we tend to treat this issue with communists and communism in America lightly. It used to be a much more serious matter. Uh, we have to get back to treating it as a serious matter because the, um, the things that these people do as well as their uh, history make it pretty clear that we cannot be allowing people like them to infiltrate into our country, but they have infiltrated. Oh my God, have they infiltrated. And Connecticut is a showcase, so we'll get to that. In any event, <clears throat> Dick Blumenthal really made a very weak uh, denial about his uh, presence at this meeting, which only shows that you know he's being insincere about his uh, communist affiliations. So anyway, let's move on to the next thing. Connecticut COVID. Um, as you're gathering the different stories together, we're seeing that there's a... Uh, I, like I call it here, mild madness. So it's Omicron uh, as a virus we're finding isn't nearly as bad uh, as the previous versions like the Delta variant and, pre and prior. But the, uh, the, the colleges, for example, Yale and Sacred Heart have um, enforced these rules but the way they're enforcing them is a little, I don't know, there's a lack of conviction to it. I mean, they feel like they have to do it, and they're doing it, but they can't bring themselves to recognize the obvious. This strain is no different from a common cold. In any event, so you had uh, the, um, yes, Yale and Sacred Heart basically send the kids home, but they kind of made it met like optional. If you want to stay, you can stay. Meantime, um, Quinnipiac and uh, the University of Connecticut um, are still suggesting vaccinations, suggesting these things. You know, there's a, there's, um, there's the, the lack of clarity about how to set policy on this speaks for itself as far as I'm concerned. In any event, moving on to the next thing. Ah, yes, Kami of the Week. Comedy of the week is Rosa DeLauro. All right, now the funny thing about her when I was researching her background is that if you talk to people who kind of follow liberals and progressives, she's usually the first one that people would think of when they tend to associate uh, liberals with communists. And there's, there's a track record and history there, but there's not a lot of footprints. It's very odd. So when I was going, going over her bio, the best way to describe it is that her political background, whatever communist ties she has, and I'm sure there are many, they're woven into social justice and labor movements uh, and women's rights primarily. And it would take a little bit of digging to, to pull some of those out. But by a contrasting example, someone different, a former uh, uh, congressional representative, Elizabeth Etsy, uh, who had to leave office under charges of uh, sexual abuse, um, had as a, an assistant a gentleman named Mr. Goldman. Well, it turns out Mr. Goldman, who was a, a prized operative in the Democrat Party, was also a delegate to the Communist Party Convention. So it's people like that, connections like that, where you have to stop and go, you know, what's going on? We're going to try and, there's so many players in this picture, it, it's just, it's out of control. At some point, I'm going to try to do a, we do comedy of the week, but there's, there's, God, there's so much. It's, it's sickening. 
All right, moving on. Early signs of the boards of education pulling back. Now, if it was a month ago, we would have been hearing about the mandates. We would have been hearing about um, how difficult the boards of education were being. We would have heard about the parents being frustrated by uh, the non-response of these boards when they went to the hearings. Well, there are signs of cracks in the wall. There was an announcement um, that the Naugatuck uh, Board of Education is reviewing their policies for evidence of discrimination. So that's big. The other is that the Ellington Public School came out and said, I mean, basically complained and pushed back to the state authorities saying what you're doing is not right. You're stigmatizing children in the school system. This really has to change. Now, for my money, in the press conference, we had the link up, but the, press, the Ellington board was just too polite. I don't see how you could be that polite when people are being caused to suffer by people's policies. Anyway, all right. The uh, Clinton campaign lawyers to the rescue. Yes. All right, well, as we know, the Durham probe proceeds apace, much to our surprise. Well, one of the interesting things is that a theory that Durham is pursuing, and it's certainly consistent with what you hear if you go through the history of this, was that the Clinton campaign used the law firm Perkins & Coie um, to actually uh, present the... Uh, the fake dossier to the uh, Department of Justice. Okay, well, all of a sudden now the Clinton campaign people have an issue. So guess what? In rush the lawyers to defend Hillary's campaign and in turn Hillary. So it's another case. This is another step closer. And I think we're getting a little closer to the truth here. Like we don't know what it is. But the Durham probe is very methodically continuing to dig away. I, 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 I I think it's great, but boy, it sure has taken a long time. Anyway, the next thing is um, the Canadian province of New Brunswick, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, loses, loses the mark of the beast due to public pressure. There was an effort to restrict unvaccinated people from being able to access uh, grocery stores. And public pressure was so great that the authorities in New Brunswick had to give in. And it was a done deal. So, you know, this is an indication that even in Canada, where they've had very harsh measures, if you um, speak up and push back, you can get results. And I think we're seeing that in other places as well. Okay, this one, this one is very upsetting. Herpes virus in the Pfizer vaccine? What? Okay, we have the link up. Um, I think the lawyer's name is Renz, who's been researching this. And he produced some documentation. It was a leaked document from Pfizer showing that a number of people who had been exposed to the vaccine contracted herpes. Now, the only um, logical explanation this biology guy can come up with is that, how would I want to put this? Um, it's the argument that the vaccine weakens the body. And as a result, if you already are a carrier of herpes, and many people are, type 1 and type 2, and others, then, yeah, that will, uh, quote, unleash the herpes vaccine. So the herpes virus in your body. I mean, I, all I can do is report what I saw. When I looked at the document, they were saying in their trial, it was almost 20% of the people tested or who had received the vaccine developed herpes. 20%. Uh, this is outrageous. What the hell is going on? But it was a leaked document. It's another example of things that Pfizer doesn't want to talk about. There's still a lot of stuff being held back. They're supposed to release it periodically. But again, there's a need for public pressure to make Pfizer fess up. Because as some have suggested, we're going to find that Pfizer was engaged in a lot of criminal activity around the uh, development of these uh, vaccines. It's, it's outrageous. Anyway, next is, and this is the one that really troubles me. If you thought 2021 was bad, wait for 2022. Okay, what drives this? SCOTUS, the Supreme Court, has actually gone to Biden and asked him to respond to the flood of vaccine mandate appeals. 
all right? So I am not a fan of the Supreme Court. I can understand their approach to some things, but if anything, I don't. Let's just put it this way. In a cynical moment, and I think I'm justified, you would say, screw informed consent. Screw the Nuremberg Code. Screw the science showing the vaccine is a failure. At best, at best, what we could expect from the court is a very narrow ruling on harm. A lot of people are going to be pissed off. The problem I have, this is just my belief, is that this just sets the stage for authorities to um, push these mandates even more vigorously than um, previously. Plus, Steve Bannon has pointed out that what's happening in Europe is coming this way. Now you consider, for example, that already on the docket for the New York State legislative session coming up, they're going to have um, one of the bills to be considered. It's appalling. It's to set up a detention camp to uh, actually take the, quote, unvaccinated out of society and put them into this camp. The same stuff they're doing in Australia. They want to do in New York State. Now, I've been on the lookout for similar legislation in Connecticut, but I haven't seen it yet. It doesn't mean it isn't coming. This, um, this, I, I just feel like the stage is being set for a very rough year between his comments and, and the implications that I think that are in this ruling and the way it's going to go. So, um, and just to continue with my uh, cynicism, I just want to remind you, don't forget, there are exemptions. That's right, you have vaccine mandates. Oh yeah, and you have exemptions. Shall I go down the same tired list? The 6,000 employees of the White House, exempted from the mandates. Congress, exempted from the mandates. The CDC employees, exempted from the mandates. FDA, okay, Johnson & Johnson, Moderna, Pfizer, all exempted. Oh yeah, that's right, I forgot. All the Chinese students in America, they're exempted too. At what point do you say that this stinks? All right. Got to speak up. Anyway, moving on. All Long Island counties reject the New York mask mandate. So now we're up to two-thirds of the counties in New York State that are basically telling uh, Governor Hoxall to stuff it. And then they're not going to honor these ma um, uh, mask mandates. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Um, you're seeing these, uh, these um, pushbacks, uh, but in my opinion, it's not enough. In any event, so a couple of quick things is the former Ukraine president, this was the same guy of which um, Joe Biden said, well, son of a bitch, if he didn't fire the prosecutor. That was Peter Poroshenko, Petro Poroshenko. Well, Petro Poroshenko, the former Ukraine president, that's right, has been charged with treason. So we'll be staying uh, tuned on that. And a couple other quick things, a story to be followed up on. In vitro fertilization clinics are reporting a spike up in stillbirths. Stillbirths at the in vitro fertilization clinics have gone from 11% 11, 11 to something like 40%. And they're, they're fighting the obvious. They're fighting acknowledging that these are happening because of the women who are vaccinated. So we'll be following up on that. And the last thing I just want to give a shout out to is Tuesday, tomorrow night at Sliders in Plantsville, Connecticut. There's going to be a big planning meeting going on. Be there or be square, and we'll have the link up for that. All right. Thank you very much, folks.